Hey everyone, it's Emily. I thought it would be interesting today to talk with you about a big resilience issue that's often on my mind, the grid. I mean, basically everything in our lives relies on our power grid. And with all the extreme heat this summer, I think it's pretty normal to think about what would happen if the grid went down. And it's not like this is a way out there scenario. It happened this summer. It happened in late June in the Balkan states. Several countries lost power entirely for quite a few hours. When I was looking for a link to pull up for that, to verify for you all that there had been that outage in the Balkans in June, I was actually quite surprised by how many of the links for that story were already dead. And I think that you may be noticing, too, how many serious regional climate and weather related matters here in the U.S. are no longer making the national news. I think it's important that we not look away because there's a lot we can do to prepare for what's coming and we can do it together, like with this grid stuff, because I don't know a lot about it. It's way outside of my field. But fortunately for us in the AR community, we've got some serious power in like every branch of the modern STEM professions at this point. So I reached out to some community members who work on the grid and asked for some resources so that we could all better understand how the grid is doing and learn how we can keep an eye on grid function in our area. And this is cool. I didn't know this before, but they taught me every regional grid has online tools now where you can see what's up with supply and demand. And we can use these tools to predict demand related outages ahead of time. So if you're in a long hot spell, this is news you're gonna be able to use. Also, if your region is facing extreme cold later this winter, early notice for demand issues could give you some time to at least charge up your devices, be ready to change over to backup power, or even go buy some ice before the gas station runs out. Let's take a look. We're gonna learn about the national grid for just a minute. We're gonna look at a couple of real-time regional grid resources. And then we're gonna talk about national grid vulnerabilities and what's going on in the industry to address their serious issues. There are indications that for many parts of the US, we should be potentially concerned about utility outages this winter. So this is the very first thing that our AR community members who work on the grid showed me when I started having this conversation with them. And I was like, wow, your industry really cares about answering people's questions about the grid. I think that this is a great infographic and you'll see that this is just the highlight sort of of a much larger report where if you're interested in regional issues, you'll be able to dig way down. But if you like me are a normie in this content area, this might be the first time you've looked at a national map of the grid and even been able to identify your regional grid. One thing jumps out to me on this map right away. Chicago has been putting in the money on power infrastructure. I love Chicago. I grew up in the Chicago area. And there are a lot of reasons I think Chicago is an excellent climate resilient destination city. This is just one more chip on the pile if you look at their grid stability. It's nice to see that Cleveland, Ohio is also looking good on power stability. Both of these Midwestern cities have pretty strong climate outlooks, just FYI. Let's try to understand what's going on in these higher risk areas. The grid operators are looking out to the future. They're looking as far out as 2029 if we read the details there. So let's try and understand why would there be a big capacity shortfall in the near-ish future, two, three years out in the northern Midwest, and why is that the same story all the way down to Louisiana? What's going on there? We're going to find out. But I think it's even more pressing that we look at the nearer future issues. If you look at some of these issues on the list, like our regions in red, they're looking at challenges a few years out, but Texas, the Southwest and New England are facing risk, it says here, their concern is adequate power for this year, for winter of 24. So let's go look at some of the regional tools and see what you can do to get information so you can respond to this potential for near-term risk and the grid. I was encouraged to show off this site for the California ISO, CAISO, as an example of a regional grid site that's being used successfully to help people predict power outages ahead of time. We've just got to scroll down a little bit here and view today's outlook. You can see we've got a deep dashboard here letting us look at current and forecasted demand and supply. If you look at the seven-day resource adequacy trend, you can see that although the CAISO is doing pretty good right now, there are some days in the next seven days where they're expected to see the demand get fairly near the supply, a comfortable margin. 
I'm told on good authority that this allows you to get an idea maybe three or four days ahead if you're going to see these peaks get over these top lines in a way that could be problematic so that you can kind of have your ears up and that you should be able to predict when regional outages may start hitting within three to four hours with pretty good accuracy. That's cool. That's nice to have another way where you can look ahead and prepare for challenges in your immediate environment. But I don't live in California. So let's see if we can identify similar resource dashboards on the regional grid for my area, MISO. As we scroll down here, we can see that there are some very clear public facing indicators of what's going on with the grid and what's going on with supply and demand. There are also real-time displays available similar to what we saw for the California grid. Let's check it out. And this is interesting. They divide it up into market displays where you can see what's going on regionally and operations displays where we can see the same sort of real-time load information that we saw on the California system. It looks to me like this is the tool that would allow us to get a few hours at least of advanced warning for when supply is likely to exceed demand, similar to what I know is being done with the KISO grid page. And I don't wanna go through every regional grid page. I just wanna give you another example so that hopefully we have more of an idea of what to look for and what resources to keep in our back pocket to help us get early advance notice before the power goes out. So this is cool. This is something where I really feel like I learned something from the AR community to help give me a heads up before power outages happen. And I like having another resource to check out when I'm concerned about demand related grid failure. But of course, there are plenty of other things that could smash the grid than just too much demand. Let's see what concerns the experts have about contemporary grid reliability and learn what's going on with those red level regional grid vulnerabilities. We've got all that right here in the 2023 Long-Term Reliability Assessment by NERC. A document that is potentially extremely boring and unreadable, but when I started getting into it, honestly, I was very impressed. This is some very clear, very accessible technical writing with great instructions for how to read and interpret the document. And if you look down here on page six, you'll see that the graphic that we looked at on that one pager closer to the beginning of this video is in fact integral to the report and allows us to understand structurally some of the major issues that will be covered in the report. You can see this report has clearly stated assumptions and guides for reading, along with a clear, detailed, accurate table of contents. So if you're interested in these issues, you can definitely understand your local situation by reading just the pages you need in this document. It's very well organized. But I'm gonna assume many of you don't wanna read it and I'll give you a little overview. Here's the biggest threats to the grid in this document. And these are normal threats, like threats engineers are handling, so not a Carrington type event, which could totally fry the grid and there's not much we can do to stop it. And not a terrorism type event, which is also a serious grid vulnerability concern, particularly in the Pacific Northwest. All of the many parts of the country looking at shortfalls this winter, we're talking about vulnerabilities during the energy transition. Specifically, shortfalls related to the potential need for national gas, the need for a diverse resource mix, especially in cold weather. The report also notes that crypto mining is putting strain on the system and that crypto mining in Texas was a factor in prior winter outages. I'm going to give you my opinion here for just a minute. I think it's pretty weird that a lot of people in the climate space are so into crypto. They want to use cryptocurrencies for their communities. They act like crypto is some free green technology. But crypto uses a ton of energy. The stuff you do on your phone has actual impacts in terms of power use and water use. Anyway, the degree to which the challenges of the energy transition are a big part of both the orange and red sectors on that grid map we looked at initially, the big concern is that we're gonna be retiring fossil fuel plants faster than we're getting renewables online. And that's a noteworthy concern. The transition to renewable energy is not challenge free but identifying challenges doesn't mean we shouldn't attempt them. We need to face this future head on. If you're seeing red on this map, if it's red in your region, it means it should be doing your part to build home resilience for power outages, which are likely to be tied to the kind of extreme weather conditions where you most need energy for heating or cooling. If you read the report, you'll learn more about many significant challenges that have already been overcome. The work being done on the energy transition is often invisible to many of us. 
All we care about is if the power is flowing, right? But it's an enormous undertaking where I think it's important to take a look at the size and quality of this operation and show some appreciation for the thousands of Americans involved in pulling off a very rapid energy transition. It's not cool to be in a situation where we have to take an honest look at the grid and see that there is the potential for both hot and cool season power outages during this transition. But we need to make the switch if we want to keep any hope of a good future. It's critical that we get emissions down. We need to make the transition fast enough that there are going to be some bumps in the road. And I think it's just a reality we need to face. I hope this video helped you see how maybe you can get a little advance notice before your power goes out during a heat wave or during an extended cold period. And for much of the country, you might really want to consider this winter as potentially including power instability. If you're on a budget like my family, this is the time. Right now in the summer is the time to make your plan for how you could keep your family warm in an emergency. It's often cheaper to buy things in the wrong season, right? I encourage you to take a step towards resilience today. There are challenging conditions ahead. All we can do is respond to them as best we can. And that means taking in the best information we can. Let's do our best and let's get ready. Folks, thanks for watching. I wanna thank everyone in the AR community. Your contributions really keep this nonprofit going. If you wanna donate, there's a link on the about page for our YouTube channel or on the top bar of our website, www.americanresiliency.org. I'm very grateful to our donors, to our volunteers, to everyone spreading the word online, and especially to everyone doing the work on the ground. Thanks for getting ready with me and talk with you again soon.